church. We're going to give him glory. Lift up your voice this morning as we give him thanks.
Jesus, to speak your word.
this morning that we have the assurance that you are in full control, Jesus. You have plans to prosper us and to bless us, plans for a beautiful future. And we thank you this morning for your Holy Spirit in this place. We thank you that we can come together and lift up your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Wow, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Are you all good? Tell your neighbor, Mary, good morning. Just look at all this. Say, Happy New Year. Come on. Please greet somebody next to you and say, God bless you and welcome. And uh, yes, we're happy that you're here today. And uh, you're all looking good. You're all looking uh, bigger in size than Jesus intended. So I say, yes, we thank God for you. Let's give the team an awesome round of applause. They did so well. We appreciate all of them. And good with us first time on the base. Let's give him a good round of applause. I also think his mom is visiting us, Auntie Shireen is here, uh, uh, we're glad that she is here. Also Nicola's mom, Iris, uh, and sister Melanie, uh, that are here, we thank God for them. Then we have uh, Lenny and family, Vishal is here, all the little Esther is here, they are from Bogosil, Linda is here as well, and uh, then also, who else have we got? I just lost now, but let's give them a, a good round of applause. Nice to have you, and uh, may God bless you. You enjoy the service, and uh, yes, the only time we'll see you guys now is next year. But uh, yes, so uh, the only time we'll see you will be next year. But uh, we thank God for all of you. Have a good week. Yes, all good. Did you have a, a good week? Yes, thanks, Danny. Uh, yes, so God bless you, and uh, please remember that. We're meeting tonight at half past five. Tell your name, half past five. At half past five, we are meeting uh, for our New Year's uh, Eve service. Uh, it should be about two hours or so. Remember uh, that. And then uh, our Tuesday meeting has closed for the next three weeks. Uh, and but we still have our Sunday meeting, usual time at eight a.m. You're welcome to join. And then also, uh, uh, we can start Dad's book. Uh, have that isn't that a good book? So uh, please remember Dad's annual devotional book, uh, Joseph Sack of Grain, is available at 200 Rand uh, there at the back if you need. You can also call the office uh, and call one of us if you need uh, that. But it's a wonderful book, a daily devotional, uh, 365 days of waking up with the Word of God, awesome achievement, powerful Word of God, current Word. And so uh, you'll be blessed. You can purchase that at the back. And uh, it's a good gift as well to people. And uh, if you have family members who are out of town that want to purchase a book, please let us know uh, so that we can coordinate. But uh, yes, say praise the Lord. And then we have some uh, uh, matriculants that uh, uh, finished off this year. Bianca, Caprice, Harlan, Caleb, Violin, Jordan, Hillel, Mason, Nathan, Leon, Ria, Ryan, Seth, Pearson, Tyler. So many uh, guys who finished school this year. If we missed out some names, uh, please forgive us. But let's congratulate these kids. They did excellently. And uh, we thank God for them. Reese was third in his class with a 94% pass rate. Grace governed the three distinctions uh, in, and maths, in math, science, Bible study. Wow, excellent stuff. Jeremiah Freshfield, first position, six distinctions. Uh, English, Afrikaans, maths, uh, MST, social science, nice kid, very good kid. Uh, Jotham Freshfield, second position, four distinctions. English, Afrikaans, maths, life skills. Kairos governed the first year Bachelor of Science in IT, five distinctions. Wow. Priyanka Jagasa, first position, nine distinctions. What? Whose father are you, Anna? Emerson Ivan Ayer, three awards, top standard in history, top three in class, and merit award given. Excellent. Come on. Let's give these folk a great round of applause. And Miriam Governor, first in Pastor Joey's life. Excellent. Let's give her to the wonderful. So, uh, yes, congratulations to all of you. And uh, God bless you. Looking forward to 2024. And uh, be excited, be expectant, listen to the word of God. And uh, God is going to do great things in 2024. Amen.
So uh, please put your hands together for Dad as he comes here. Hey, everybody, Happy New Year! What tell you? What tell you? Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, hallelujah. Are you all happy? Are you all doing good? Hello to our family by live stream. The Lord bless you. Vishal and Linde, nice to see you this morning. Where are you? Hey, Vishal looking good, man. Hallelujah. Liverpool's doing very good. Bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. They also say the same thing about Man United. Yeah. So the Lord bless you all. I'm happy you're here. This is the last day of the year. God has been good to us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving us trouble. Also, we appreciate that so much. Peace of God be with you. Uh, please remember that if you, uh, you want to keep your health good, uh, you don't stop uh, training uh, at Christmas time. You still continue. In fact, you should train more now because Turkey has more calories. So you should be training more. So don't abandon your exercise program and all the rest of it because it's so bad that some people's own hearts attack them. So you better. And then when you're running a park run or you're walking, you can't phone and walk. I saw a man yesterday, he got his phone, and I don't want to mention his name, but he's seated on this side here. I saw him yesterday, I, I'm trying to wave at him. <laughs> but anyway, the Lord bless you. We're happy, we're going to have service at 5 o'clock. They had a good song on, and uh, that song is um, descriptive of what we have, the command of God. Come tonight, we'll empower you, we'll empower you again this morning. Pray the Lord will bless you. If you had people who are sick, we pray they'll get well. If you've lost some loved ones, pray that they all, you'll also feel the comfort of the presence of the Lord. Colin's family is here. Colin was the first cousin of Ragani, passed away. His wife and family, are you here? Where are they, please? Can we just see them? Colin's family, stand for us, please, man. The Lord bless you all. The Lord be with you. And God give you, very, uh, give you comfort at this time in Jesus' name. So God bless. We're happy we're going to serve them communion later. Today is the last day for birthday cakes. <laughs> so I hope you brought yours. Yeah, you, you brought your birthday cakes. So I hope you brought your birthday cakes. And I pray the Lord will bless you this morning in the name of Jesus. And the peace of God will be with you. Thank you, Pastor Sid, for all your work. Thank you to the, uh, to the committee here, to the musicians and the singers and all of them. They've done a great job this morning. Give them a good round of applause. Thank you. I must set the time here so that I know what is happening, just in case they, uh, we overrun the time. Some of you were on holiday. You're back. Lenny is here. Lenny and Neri are here. Please give them a good round of applause. Lenny and Neri, all the way from the south coast, from Toti. We're happy that you're here. The Lord bless you both in the name of Jesus. So, so this man, was, uh, he's, he's walking in the park. And he saw this man who was drunk. This is a very dignified man. He saw this guy in the park and he's drunk out of his mind. Dirty, filthy, and stinking. And uh, he saw this man there and he's, this man, this beggar, he asked this man, uh, decent man, he said, can you give me 20 rands? So the decent man said to him, if I give you 20 rands, will you go and drink with that? That fellow said, no, I won't drink. I'll buy food. Then he said, if I give you 20 rand, will you smoke with that 20 rand? He said, no, I will buy food with that. Then he asked him, if I give you 20 rand, will you gamble with that 20 rand? He said, no, I won't gamble with the 20 rand. He said, I'm going to give you 20 rand, but I'm also going to take you to my house, and I want you to meet my wife. I'll get her to prepare the best dinner for you. So he got to the house, this dirty, stinking man who won't even do anything, uh, get the 20 rand and then this man lets him in and his wife uh, is there and the man says look at this man I want to give him 20 rand he won't drink with that 20 rand he won't smoke he won't go fishing with that 20 rand he said and look at him how he's stinking and he's dirty and said you want me to give up drinking smoking and fishing I'll finish up like this man <laughs> So, so there's some merit in the story. I know why some of you are not giving up now. 
Others, I will send the joke by WhatsApp to you <laughs> with additional laughs. <laughs> and Mona Lisa, I love you. <laughs> All right, so let's listen to the word of the Lord today. In the name of Jesus. I didn't have a good week. It was a little bit trying. My friend Sagarin, his wife died, went to the funeral. It's a nice funeral. And uh, we're thankful to God for that. Pray the Lord will bless the family. Ezra chapter 3. And I'm going to be with you a little while this morning. Ezra chapter 3. Uh, verse number 10. The, the text will appear on the board for you. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites, sons of Asaph, with symbols to praise the Lord according to the ordinances of David, king of Israel. All of these people sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. And the Bible says uh, towards Israel, Then all the people shouted with a great shout, and they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Then verse number 12 says, But many of the priests and the Levites and the heads of the families of the fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. I'm going to put all of these texts together for you this morning as we look to the Lord on this final day, morning service here at the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. Just look to the Lord this morning. Say, Lord, speak to me this morning. Come on, say, Lord, speak to me. Change something. Listen, God's going to deal with you this morning. God's going to deal with you. The Holy Spirit's going to deal with you. You're going to have a shift in your spirit. I want you to change your mindset. I want you to change your heart. I want you to change everything about your life this morning. Come on, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord today. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great. Come on. Is our God. Oh, we'll see how great. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing to me how great is our God. Stand with me for a while. Come on. Come on, lift your voices up. Is our God. Name above all. Come on. I want you to echo that this morning. Name. My heart will sing. How great is our God. Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. My Savior. Your God to thee. How great thou art. sings my soul. Come 
God, I want you to lift up your voices this morning. We magnify your name, oh God. Your word, Father. 365 days, God has been good. 365 days, food on the table, roof over your head, clothes on your back. 365 days, God has been good. God has been good. Every reason to praise Him. Every reason to worship Him. Every reason to magnify His name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then sings my soul. Come on, come on, come. My Savior God to me. How great it is. How great the How great, how great, how great. How great Yes, yes. Then sees my soul. My Savior. My Savior God to thee. Say thank you to the Lord this morning. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You've been good to me. Say you've been good to me. You've kept me. You've watched over me. Despite all my challenges, you have been good to me. And I bless you this morning. Praise the name of our God. We lift up our hands with gratitude. We lift up our voices with gratitude. You have been good, Father. You have been good to us, Lord. We worship you this morning, mighty Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please give the Lord a praise offering. Take a seat this morning. In the name of Jesus. The history of the people of Israel is very well known. You know, the Bible says that they were in Egypt 430 years. And it tells us God got them a deliverance by a man by the name of Moses. Moses was uh, born at a difficult time. Bible says he spent time in the wilderness. Moses was finally the deliverer that brought them out of Egypt. The Bible says also read from Exodus chapter 1. You'll find all of that there. The Bible says that they were in the wilderness for, four, for 40 years. Uh, and in that time God had dealt with them. So they came out through the wilderness and the Bible says they came to the promised land. The land that God wanted to give to them. But what had happened was at that time they came out of the uh, wilderness. Then they had judges over them to watch over the people and to see that everything was all right. After the judges, the Bible tells us, if you read Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and then you're reading 1 and 2 Samuel, you're reading 1 and 2 Kings, uh, and then 1 and 2 Chronicles, etc., Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, as the books go. But then it tells us that what happened was that uh, as they came out of the period of Judges, the people came to a time, they said they wanted a king. And they said the reason they wanted a king was they wanted to be like the other nations around them. And the Bible says, God said, no, I don't want to give you a king because he's going to give you trouble. They said, no, we want a king. So the Lord said, I'll give you a king. But when it goes wrong, you don't come back to me. And the scripture says that God gave them a king. And that king was Saul. Saul disobeyed God. David became king. You know the story very well. So the, the idea there is that you can't play around with God. God can dispense of anybody. You know, there's no big shot. I, I, you don't think that I'm important. If that God doesn't want me, he'll just move you out. Tell your neighbor, nobody's important. Come on. Yeah, God can take you on. In a sense, you're important. In a sense, you're unimportant. Keep that in mind. That's a paradox. So you can work it out for yourself. That's about for you. So Saul was king. He got kicked out. David became king. And the Bible says uh, David was the most powerful king in Israel. And then God, David wanted to build a temple. God said no. Then he said Solomon will build the temple. Solomon built an elaborate temple. The Bible tells us that it was a beautiful temple. You read the account in 1 Kings chapter 8. Uh, and then two chronicles, etc. You see the power of the temple. But the temple was six billion dollars value. Six billion at that time. Can you imagine what it would cost now? Everything was gold, beautiful. Solomon built the temple, and the scripture tells us that they they they, they sacrificed two twenty-two thousand oxen when they were dedicating the temple. Twenty-two thousand oxen, one hundred and twenty thousand sheep. 
For 40 days, Solomon had a dedicatory ceremony. And the Bible says that at the end of it all, the glory of the Lord came down. And then that's why you read in 2, 2 Chronicles 7, where Solomon is talking to the Lord. He said in verse number 14, If my people call by my name, humble themselves, seek my face, pray, turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven, I'll heal their land, and I'll forgive their sins. God said that. To that was a promise in the context of the temple that was built. So it's a phenomenal temple that they built. But what had happened was the people disobeyed God. So when they disobeyed God, God sent the prophets to warn them, but they didn't listen. Tell your neighbor they didn't listen. See, sometimes I'm like that. Yeah, they didn't listen. So when they didn't listen, God said, I'm going to send you into captivity. And the Bible says, God allowed Babylon to, cap to capture them. Nebuchadnezzar was the man. And the Bible says he came, captured the people of God, took them as captives to Babylon. And it says they destroyed the temple and took all of the utensils and everything that they had in the temple and they took them away to Babylon. So the, the, that was something that happened around 586 BC. That's what most writers tell us. But then they were in captivity for 70 years. God allowed them then to come back to Israel. You getting the story? God allowed them to come back. That's where I started reading today. That they went into captivity and now they're coming back. But what they want to do is they want to rebuild that temple. Because the temple was broken down, the walls of Jerusalem were destroyed, everything was burnt. Now the people who were in captivity have been released and they're coming back to build the temple. So that's the context of this whole text that I read for you today. So here we have this beautiful temple. Now, they are rebuilding this temple. And then they have a problem. The rebuilding process is a problematic one. They build the altars, they have the feasts, etc., etc. But what happened was, when they were rebuilding this temple, this very temple that had been destroyed and God had given to them, the Bible tells us that the opposition came against them didn't want to want them to build or rebuild the temple. The opposition mocked them and the opposition stopped the building process. So while they started to build, rebuild, they had opposition and they halted the building process for 15 years. They came back from captivity, happy to rebuild, but that rebuilding process is halted. I want to read to you a text here. Haggai says, uh, 15 years lost. One of the reasons, uh, one of the things that happened when that building process was stopped was the people lost interest. The people lost interest in the building. Haggai says here, one, he says, the Lord of hosts speaks. He says, the people say the time has not come, the time has a uh, time that the Lord's house should be built. And he says, is it time for you, for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, he says, consent. So in the time, my beloved, that this process was halted, the people, they lost interest in the rebuilding of the temple. They forgot about their captivity and everything else. And the Bible says, they said, we leave this temple alone. Let's go, let's give attention to our own house. So this prophet Haggai is saying to them, what is wrong with you? What is the matter with you? You saying, it's not time to rebuild the house of God. He says, why are you neglecting the house of God? If you get a chance, read the whole book of Haggai. Then the Bible says, he says to them now, consider your ways. He says, you're not doing the right thing. Let me pause for a little moment. You can be the best businessman or the best woman. You can be the smartest person around. You can be the most beautiful person. You can be the person with all the ideas and the most powerful person. But if you're not connected with the house of God, you're a total failure. Completely. Don't care how well you can do stuff. But if you don't have the connection with God's house and the grace, you are nothing. Say, tell your neighbor nothing. So please remember that. So that's what happened. And later on you'll find out 
or how the people fare. But let's go on with this whole thing here. Now, the, uh, what happened was they had stopped that rebuilding building process. But now they had to start. Tell your neighbor they had to restart. Come on. Yeah, you know what happened the other day? My wife, she, she got this car of us. It's a Nissan. It's a cash car. That means you get cash and you get kai. <laughs> what that is, only God knows. You ask Ronel, she'll tell you. She knows a lot. So my wife, what happened was, she calls everybody. When my wife's car breaks down, I'm the last person she calls because she knows I'm not a motor mechanic. So she called Patrick, everybody else, they come and fiddle with the car. Then they phone me, they said, this car's battery is gone. And I said, all right, we can't get a battery. Christmas Day, where are you going to get batteries? Santa Claus doesn't carry batteries. He's got a red hat. <laughs> so we tried him. He couldn't get us a battery. He's here now. So <laughs> didn't get us a battery. So he said, right, we wait for the next day, all the rest of it. So uh, what had happened was there was some mystery about how that battery went down, but we leave that story for another day. But what they had to do is the guy had to come. <laughs> He had to recharge that battery and everything and get it restarted because it had stalled. Now, this temple building was stalled. They had to restart it. Tell your neighbor, restart it. Yeah, they had to do something. The building process. You see, something stopped. Uh, they, uh, they, they could not do anything by their own intellect. They could do nothing by their own volition or will. They could do nothing by their own power. That temple rebuilding had to be started. But it had to be started by the prophetic voice. Are you hearing me? So what happens is Haggai and Zechariah. The Bible says in Ezra 5. Haggai and Zechariah uh, prophets prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah. And it says, they said, uh, the, uh, Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Yeshua, the son of Josedach, rise up and begin to build the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. See, my beloved, that process had stopped. So the two prophets who had come with them, they got up, they got to the leaders, and they said, listen, what you have to do now, is you have to start building it again. Are you hearing me? Because it had stalled for 15 years. So the prophetic voice had to be released in order that the building process might start again. Tell your neighbor, restart. And then we come to this place here. That's when we read this morning. That's where we came to. It says... The builders laid the foundations. You remember that? The builders laid the foundation. Then they got music. The priests are there. Symbols praising God. Then the Bible says the people praise God. They said he is good. His mercy endures forever. And they praise the almighty God. Now, in that group, if you read the text that we have, the Bible says... As they were praising God, the temple is restarted. There are two groups of people. It says, one is the older group. My age, Pastor Brian's age, and maybe a few others. Older group. But then there's, the, there's a group they call the other group. But they say, when the temple was restarted, the building was restarted, it says that what they did was, the older people began to cry. And the others were shouting for joy. And the scripture says they shouted for joy. And it says the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of weeping of the people. So one crowd, the old crowd is crying when they saw the temple foundation being laid. The others, were, whoever they were, maybe young people, they are shouting for joy. So on one hand, people are crying. On the other hand, the people are shouting for joy. There's a mixture here in this rebuilding process after the prophet said, start the building. You see, my beloved, 
many of the old people had seen that old temple, Solomon's temple. The old people knew Solomon's temple. 22,000 oxen, 120,000 sheep. They knew also the six billion worth of gold and silver and everything else. When the old people saw it, they were crying because this was not like the old temple. They said, oh, you know people cry, it's not like this. Oh, we had it so nice. You talk about that. Our day, bread, one rand a loaf. That same story. These people, old people are crying. The gold is not there. The silver is not there. The bronze is not there. Perhaps they were they were thinking, listen, uh, this is over and, and it's not going to work for us. It's nothing. And uh, they were talking about the past. They were disappointed and they were crying because it didn't look like that at all. So let me stop there for a minute and tell you that my beloved, move this up next uh, slide. Thank you. Uh, today, when you close 2020, I want you to know that God is not finished with you. Tap your neighbor, say, God's not finished with you. Say, when God is finished with you, say, say, come talk to me. Come, what's your, the, the, the fruitcake is working here. Come on. <laughs> say, God is not finished with you here. Say, by the time God is finished with you, you look better than this. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm so happy to see you all. This is my friend. Did pastor know you here? Yeah? You told him. All right, he'll know now. He'll probably see. Put the camera on there. <laughs> yeah. So God's not finished with you. Listen to what he said, Genesis 28. I am with you. I'll keep you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I've spoken to you. I'll tell you what. That is one of my prayers. I tell him. Hey God, your word says you're not going to leave me until it's finished. And I'm telling you what, you better finish this thing in my life. Whatever I want to do, whatever I want to say, wherever I want to go. Every day I get up and say you're not finished. Who told you it's the end of your life? Who told you you got nothing left? I read an article the other day. They said that the best years, most productive years of any individual's life is between the ages of 60 and 80. Yeah! <laughs> Who told you God's finished? Marlon and Minnie welcome this morning. They didn't welcome you. All these jo Joburg visitors, they come with gold, silver, and precious stones. Bring it from Josie. They're coming. But anyway, God's not finished with you yet. And you know what we have to do this morning, my beloved? What we have to say to the living God is, we like Israel, you lost your stuff. How many lost stuff this morning? Some people were robbed. Say hallelujah, come on. Some people, they stole from you. You took your wallet out there. You looked in your handbag. You don't know what happened to the stuff. Some of you, failure. Some of you, people stopped you. Circumstances stopped you. But other people, you had low expectations. I want you to know I came this morning to church to prophesy to you like Haggai and Zechariah and tell you, come on, let's get up. Let's do this thing again. If God can cause the rebuilding of the temple, then God can do something for us. Say hallelujah. Hear the voice of the Lord. Start again. Get up. Kick start it. Move somewhat. God will hold you and God will lead you on. I told you there were two groups at the foundation. The older people were weeping. The others were rejoicing. Weeping because the, the, that rebuilding process was not like it used to be. Are you hearing me? So my friends, don't worry about the past. Don't keep talking about how you filled petrol for 15 cents a gallon. You shut your mouth. Leave that. That was that time. Are you hearing me? What are you telling your family? I used to walk without shoes to, to school. That's not, that's not their business. They didn't take your shoes away. Are you hearing me? 
Oh, don't, uh, don't blame it on the past. Are you hearing me? Leave it that you use condensed milk instead of fresh milk. <laughs> How many of you do that? And then we got yellow pages directing. We had that for the toilet. <laughs> yellow pages. <laughs> There's a song. They call it mellow yellow. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> hey, we came from there. Don't blame these people. That was your story. So all the people are crying. They say, no, it wasn't like this. It wasn't like this. They're crying about the temple. But listen, Haggai and Zechariah pushed them to rebuild. And this is the important part. All that was the introduction. Zechariah prophesied with these words. Zechariah prophesied to them. He was saying this. Listen, don't tell people, oh, everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Tomorrow it will be okay. No, 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 no. You must use the word of the Lord. When Zechariah told them to rebuild, he did this in Zechariah 4 6. He said, It's not by might, it's not by power. That's what he said. Hey, he's saying, Rebuild. Rebuild, man. It's not by might. Rebuild. It's not by power. Rebuild. Rebuild. It's by the Spirit of God. You see, when you got that in your mind, you can rebuild. If you're thinking of your smartness, you can't rebuild. So they're pushing them to rebuild. The two prophets, Zechariah is saying, listen, not by might, nor by power. When you get out there, you're sitting in that business, didn't work good last year. You're saying, not by might, nor by power. Why the Spirit of the living God? You're saying we had a bad year last year at work. Not by might, nor by power. Gonna push this. Get the word of the Lord. Don't go and do all the other stuff. Are you hearing me? And Zechariah goes further. And he says this year, listen. He said, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two golden pipes from which the golden oil drains? There were two olive trees, pipes there and the, the, the oil draining. He says, listen, there's golden oil, somebody. Oil is a symbol again of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah is saying, rebuild. There's oil here. And I'll tell you what, there's golden oil. Somebody say golden oil. That means it's precious. That means it's beautiful. That means it's blessed. When you get gold, something's happening. Are you with me? Zechariah says, hey, listen, not by might or by power, but by the Spirit, but you've got the oil of God. And then in 14, 14, this is what he says, the wealth of the surrounding nations shall be gathered to you, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Hallelujah. Zechariah says, rebuild. He says, not by might or by power. He says, rebuild. There's golden oil flowing. He says, rebuild, restart. He says, the wealth of the Gentiles, surrounding nations. I'll tell you what, wherever you see the Gentiles, walk by them. Say, that thing is going to come to me. That's going to belong to me. I'm a child of God. I don't care whether my business is small or large, but God's going to send the people to my business. I don't care whether other people in my company get the promotion, but God's going to give me the promotion. If you're not going to live by this word, you're not going to get anything. But then, my friends, then Haggai comes along. And Haggai says, I'll shake the nations, etc., 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 I'll fill this temple with the glory. Haggai's prophecy to get them on. And Haggai says, the silver is mine. The gold is mine. Watch what he says, the Lord of hosts. And he says, now, come and move that up. The glory of this Latin temple. Hallelujah. Shall be greater than the former. Ha! I like it. Zechariah pushed them to rebuild. When Haggai says this, he says, listen, the glory of this latter temple is going to be greater than the former. Are you with me? He says, what you had is nothing compared to what you're going to have. Hallelujah. It may not have all the gold, but it's going to be greater. It might not have all the silver.
but it's going to be greater. It might not have all the trappings, but it's going to be greater. Maybe the cloud filled the place. And I want you to know today, my beloved, it might not look like it. It might not sound like it. You might not even believe me. But believe what you're seeing. But there's a glory coming to us as we restart. And that latter glory, that latter glory is going to be greater than the former. That means uh, your health is going to be so good, better than when you were a youth. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings. Your health is going to be rekindled. Your prosperity is going to be more than you had before. If you had joy, you're going to get greater joy. Whatever it is, the latter, the latter is going to be greater. Come on, shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. It's going to be greater. It's going to be greater. 31st December 2023. What you're going to experience from this on is going to be greater than what you've ever had. It's going to be. You know why? When they started rebuilding, they were pushed with the prophetic word. Haggad, Zechariah talked about the spirit, the oil, and the gold and silver. But Haggai says, man, this thing is greater. I'm saying to you, don't cry. Don't cry anymore. Don't cry about what you lost. Don't cry about what happened in your life. Come on, wipe away all of those tears. Don't bother. It's getting better. It's getting better. I'll tell you what, some of you in the first week of this new year, you're going to see some things happen. I'm not waiting for the budget. I'm not waiting for anything else. First week, hit the ground running. Somebody, in the name of Jesus, I'm ready to take off. Listen, get everything ready. Some of you get your passports ready. Some of you go and open your bank accounts. Say hallelujah. Other people go and buy a new suit and tie. Ladies, go dye your hair. Put some blonde on it. And God will bless you. Come on, get it done. Tell your neighbor, now my latter glory is coming. Come on. And when the latter comes, don't look scrappy. You're going to look sharp. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to look sharp. Ha! Open your face a little bit. Some of you men must go and get some face wash. Wash. Get some face wash. Get that one that has charcoal. It will clean you well. Say hallelujah. Trim the beard a little bit. You know why? There's a glory coming. There's a glory coming. Even if you are sad, the latter, the latter of God must do it. Must do it. That's the prophetic word. Grab hold of this prophecy that declares your latter glory. You see, when I hear something, I say, this is for me. I keep praying it. I keep praying it. I keep speaking it until it manifests. I've seen people change. I've seen situations change. All because I kept repeating what God says. You do that. Say hallelujah. Come and say praise the Lord. If anybody's sleeping next to you, give them a hard smack. Say this is a latter smack. Let me just digress a little bit. Even if you're kissing people, this latter kiss will be sweeter. <laughs> no, that's the truth. Sweeter than wine. <laughs> Mona Lisa again. <laughs> Grab hold of this prophecy. As you embrace the latter glory, I've got a few minutes left. Listen, this is what's going to happen as you embrace the latter glory. People who, are not a, people who are not supposed to help you are going to come alongside you. That's what the latter glory said. Listen, Ezra chapter 1. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom 
And he says, also put in writing, saying that he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Cyrus is a heathen king, Babylonian king. And the Bible says that, he says, who is the God among you? May his God be with him and let him go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, build the house of the Lord of God of Israel, which is in Jerusalem. The heathen king said to them, go and rebuild the temple. When the latter glory comes, people who are not supposed to help you will help you. Hallelujah. Get ready. Get ready for that. King of Persia, Cyrus, your help is going to come from unexpected sources. If the people didn't want to help you, don't worry about them. God is going to give you other help. Your family mocked you. They said, what do you mean? Every day you're dressing and going, what work are you doing? You say, this is God helping me. People mock you. God will be, bless you, my beloved. God will bless you with help that comes alongside you from places you least expected. The people you never thought will help you are going to help you. They will help you. People who are not supposed to help you. Stop begging people. Stop begging people. Don't cry. This is the last day you must cry for anybody's help. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From when comes my help? It comes from the Lord. So, God, will, the, the latter glory, God will get people to you to help you who you never expected. Say, bring them, Lord. Bring them, Lord. Somebody's going to meet you in the mess. Somebody's going to for call you. You're going to meet somebody in the car wash. And they're going to push you to your destiny. Somebody put you in the pit. They sold you to the Ishmaelites. They didn't realize you're going to land and become king. Are you hearing me? God will use the people you least expect to help you. Say hallelujah. Number two in this year, as you embrace the latter glory, precious resources are going to fall into your lap. Tell your neighbor, into my lap. Resources. Everybody say resources. Resources is the stuff I need. What do I need? I need a welding plant. I need hair, curl, hair curlers. We got straighteners as well. In my days, they used iron to straighten their hair. Straighten their hair. Whatever you need. Tell your neighbor, resources. Come on. Yeah, God is going to give it to you. Are you hearing me? God, but God will give you resources. It's gonna, tell your neighbor, it'll fall into your lap. It's going to come right here. It's going to land on you. Tell your neighbor, it's going to land on you. That's why they call it a lap. They also call it lap dancing. <laughs> Ezra 1, listen. Whoever is left, let the men of this place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the free will offering. This is a heathen king saying, give them gold and silver. Ezra 6, I issue a decree. You shall, uh, what you shall do for the elders of these Jews, for the building of the house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expenses. Ha! Heathen king. He's saying, I'm going to bear the bill here. I'm picking up the tab. Listen, whatever they need, bulls, rams, lambs, burnt offering, of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fear. I declare unlimited resources coming to you. Banks will bless you. They'll give to you. Say hallelujah. Officials will help you. People will give to you. Tell your neighbor resources. Now listen to me very carefully. You know we take the hampers. My wife takes the hampers. She got the hampers. When they opened the boot of the car, uh, that boot is supposed to take 12 hampers, but she puts 24 there. She double loads that, and Rachel sits on the hampers. <laughs> so they, they call the people from the flat, and they say, there's your hamper. They say, uh, Andy Miriam, can we have another one too? Now listen, when God gives you resources, take what you need. Hello? Don't be greedy, just take what you need. 
If they're giving you 10,000 rand, don't say, hey, I'll put another thousand there. <laughs> Are you hearing me? That's why God withholds resources. Because the moment you get it, then you start to want more. You're greedy, right, Rachel? Yeah. You're sitting on the hampers. <laughs> I want to make a song out of that, but not today. <laughs> Where is Rachel sitting on the amp? <laughs> Where is Miriam driving from unit to unit? <laughs> Get ready, resources are coming to you. If you said I don't have it, I don't know who's going to help me. The latter glory is saying resources are coming. You get up every morning. I don't know who it is, Father, but you are going to send somebody. I don't know how it's going to happen. But listen, God is a faithful God. God will send you resources. God will bless you in the name of Jesus. People can leave you. People can forsake you. But I want you to know that God will always find you. And he'll bring the resources. Whether it's in Phoenix or anywhere else. That's what happens with the latter glory. Then the latter glory. When you embrace the latter glory. Your plundered and stolen stuff will be returned. Tell your neighbor it's going to be returned. Now, Nebuchadnezzar 70 years earlier had stolen all the gold and silver. But look at what the Cyrus, King Cyrus brought out the articles out of the house of the Lord which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem, put in the temple of his gods. Look at this. Ladies, take a note here, Ezra 1, 9. The number of them, 30 gold platters. How's that, Sharon? 1,000 silver platters. How's that, Rani? 29 knives. 29 knives. Who's that, uh, Stephanie? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking for clients here. <laughs> 30 gold basins. Who is this? 410 silver basins of a similar kind. 1,000 other articles, all the articles of gold, etc., etc. Were 5,400. Huh. All the stolen stuff. Cyrus is saying, the king before me 70 years earlier took this thing. Now I'm giving it back to you. When you embrace the latter glory, the things that were stolen from you, plundered from you. God is with you. That same person, that's, that, that same person might not bring it to you, but God down the line. 70 years later, 70 years, another king says, take what belongs to you. It's coming. They stole from your fathers and mothers. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. It's coming. God will bless you. You all had property. You all had stuff. People stole it. It's coming. Now when they come and give it to you, don't ask now. Who gave that thing to you? Uh, I want to report to the police. Shut your mouth and take it. Are you hearing me? Take it. Don't, don't ask questions. Don't, don't ask questions. Uh, uh, Christians are very inquisitive. They want to know why y'all took it. Who the man who took it? No, leave it. Just bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it back here. God will bless you. Are you? How many of you had? The, 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 uh, not yet, just quiet. This is Indian thing. Those of you on live stream, this is an Indian thing. You all had a wedding in your house. After the wedding, your gold earrings are not there. <laughs> Saw somebody else wearing it. You said, I had one like this. <laughs> you know the story? How many of you have that happened to? Yeah, you have heard that. Anonymously, people are going to send stuff to you. They'll drop off some things. What you get back, it may be a little bit defective. Don't go and ask them now. Where's the other pipe that was going? <laughs> When they embrace, let me give you this. When you embrace the latter glory, I'll finish this thing here. When you embrace the latter glory, people who are not supposed to help you will come alongside you. It's number two, precious resources are going to fall into your lap when you embrace the latter glory. Number three is, when you embrace the latter glory, your plundered and stolen goods will be given back to you. When you embrace the latter glory, opposition can't stop you. They trouble them in building. Listen. They trouble them to stop the building. There's a text there. Try to discourage them. 
but he couldn't stop them. You know why? There was latter glory. They say, don't stop me. Yeah, let me go. Let me go. You know the fellows who can't fight, they'll give you help. Leave me. Leave me. Leave me. What you must do is leave him. Let him go. Yes. Let him go and get the hiding of his life to him. Today we're going to set you free. <laughs> you go. Go, mama. Go. Nobody can stop you. Messages will come. Don't let it stop you. Accusations will come. Don't let it stop you. Letters will be written. Don't let it stop you. Mockers will come. Don't give them any attention. People will tell you you're failing. Doesn't matter. If you're losing 200 grams in one week, it's fine. Just go lose the 200 grams. Are you hearing me? God is on your side. The enemy can't stop you. Tell your neighbor the enemy can't stop me. Because I have the latter glory. Are you here? Now, unwanted opposition. How are you going to deal with them? Number one is ignore the call. When you see that thing ringing, just say, just leave it like that. Then you can also, secondly, you send a message. Can't talk right now. Third way you can stop people from harassing you is place the call on hold perpetually. <laughs> on hold. <laughs> Fourth way you can do that is play loud music. <laughs> then, fifth way you can ignore calls, answer it and say wrong number. <laughs> Last, what you can do is block the caller. Then tell people, if you've got nothing good to say to me, I don't want to hear you. Are you hearing me? I don't want to hear you. Don't say this to me. God will help you. So ignore that. The opposition, let a glory you can serve them. I want to declare today, my beloved, that you'll embrace your latter glory. Haggai, Zechariah, Ezra, Nehemiah, and the others. Gold, silver, diamonds. I want to declare to you today, my beloved, there's acceleration coming into your life. There's momentum coming into your life. There's blessing coming into your life. It's the latter glory. You're saying, Father, let it come. The end is going to be better than the beginning. Ah, some of you have been waiting for years. You've been waiting. Today, I want to prophesy over you. We're breaking that bondage today in the name of Jesus. Because there's a word. It says, not by might, nor by power. It says, the latter glory will be greater. than. It says, the plowman will overtake the reaper. God says he'll do it suddenly. He'll give you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. God must bless you. Father, it's coming. You better believe it this morning. Pray for your family. Pray for your household. We want to prophesy to you this morning in the name of Jesus. We want all of these businessmen to stand up. Businessmen and businesswomen stand up in the name of Jesus. Businessmen and businesswomen stand up in the name of Jesus. Can I get this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Businessmen and businesswomen rise up this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Father. Thank you for all these businessmen. Thank you for all these businesswomen. Today, I want you to know, as Haggai said, that latter glory is going to be greater than the former. Today, we're canceling the wickedness against your business. We're canceling every negativity against your business this morning in the name of Jesus. Canceling it. I want you to ignore the call of the enemy. I want you to ignore the voice of the enemy. Are, are you with me? When you get to your business house, when you start again for 2024, you're going to put a text on your wall. It's going to say the latter is greater than the former. You will make your own sound, make your own music, make your own sound, make your own music. The latter glory is going to be greater than the former. I want to declare to you today, the people you never expected to help you are going to come and help you. God is going to bring people to you. Listen, they may not look the part, but God is going to bring them to you.
they might not look what like what you expect but God is going to bring people to you business people in the name of Jesus not only that this morning God is going to give you resources I declare today that you get favor with the banks I declare you'll get favor with the banks some of you some people are going to give you money and they will not even charge you interest because God is with you this morning in the name of Jesus the resources are coming the machines you need the personnel you need the vehicles you need whatever it is God is gonna do it in the name of Jesus because there is a latter glory resources 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 are coming to you in the name of Jesus I want to declare to you today some of you have not had you've had money withheld from you people have taken your money they've not given it back to you people have not paid you some accounts you have written off write it off tear their pages don't even go to court because there's a greater judge there's a greater judge he's the almighty God and today God is gonna bring that to you in the name of Jesus whatever has been stolen from you whatever has been plundered from you God is gonna bring it back in the name of Jesus father father come on pray church father father bless this business company father bless every one of these father bless every one of these father bless every one of these every fear is gone every fear is gone every fear is gone in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we declare the latter glory come on come on come on the gold and the silver is mine and Zechariah said he said the wealth of the heathen is laid up for you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus put your hand on your heart you business people say Lord keep my heart right with you say keep my heart right with you that's all you have to do are you hearing me your latter glory is gonna be greater than the former I want all these young people to stand up this morning this morning I consider you young if you're 40 and under hallelujah even if you're just around that come on and stand this morning hallelujah you came here this morning God is gonna bless you I like you to come to the front come to that run 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 somebody come with that oil come before them move you might lose some weight some of you chaps come on come bring all these young people bring these young people bring these young people hallelujah 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 come put some oil put some oil quick 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 where's it come come on let's pray let's bless them come back tonight come back tonight come on say on your children and your children and your children and your children hallelujah hallelujah and his favor be upon and a thousand generations your family and your children and your children and your children may his favor be upon and a thousand generations it's okay if you can't get to you it's fine just put some oil on them if you can Oh! 
praise you this morning father praise you for these young people god this is our treasure in the house all your fathers and mothers raise your hands this morning father this morning we're building a wall of fire about this about this we're building a wall of fire we're building a wall of fire pastor said get ready to pray for these people you and your wife come and stand here but i want us all to pray i want you to pray this morning say i come on say i am blessed i am favored i may live in a country where there's injustices there's favoritism there's inequality come on say it loudly say it loud there's inequality say but i don't fit into that mold i am different i have heard the voice of the prophet that my latter glory will be greater than the former lift up your hands today even if you're joining them say no curse against me come on say no curse against me will prosper say no power will come against me say the failures of my parents the failures of my relatives will not visit me say i have immunity say lord build a wall of fire about my life today i declare i am successful i am blessed i am favored because i have the latter glory say unknown people will come to my aid say resources are coming to me stuff stolen from my parents is coming to me say i'll get back my land come on say houses are coming to me say buildings are coming to me rands are coming to you dollars pounds euros they're coming to you they're coming to you you better believe it you better believe it say i'm going to be i am rich say that say i'm rich say i'm favored say i'm smart say i'm smart say i'm blessed say i'm good looking say i'm stylish because i have the latter glory come on sit come on pray come on shelter come on pray prophesy over this company thank you Shabba, father. Baba. oh lord father we thank you for this treasure that we have father the youngsters the youth of our church my father lord we thank you that the next generation will be greater the next generation will be richer come on, come on, come on. the next generation Say will yes. be more powerful Say yes. the next generation will Say be yes. stronger Say yes. oh god father we ask in your name for protection oh Whoa. god oh protect Whoa. our kids protect our youngsters watch over them my father lord we thank you that 2024 is gonna be a blessed year 2024 will be a powerful year 2024 will be a year like no other father we thank you for increased blessings we thank you that the latter will be greater than the former lord you will watch over your word to perform it father oh god father we pray please lord cover our people my father let the past be in the past father all the failures father all the mistakes that they may have made father that's in the past all the mistakes father those things are cancelled we look forward to a new future in god we look forward to a new temple we look forward to a new thing that you are going to do father open up the heavens lord jesus open up the heavens let the floodgates of heaven open upon our minds upon our hearts upon our businesses upon our future upon our schooling career father we thank you for opportunity oh god let opportunity come to your people today in the name of jesus father lord we thank you father we look to you oh god Oh, 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 oh,
hands. Just hold one person's hand. Never mind, it's a boy. Hold them by their wrist or whatever. Yeah. Just pray with them. Say, I'm going to bless you in Jesus' name. Come and bless each other. We are all family here. Bless each other, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Now, Lord, we pray as Jesus taught us how to pray by saying, Our oh, Father, so much for coming this morning. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Sing, sing that song.